Thank you, Alan. Just checking, I'm assuming that everybody that is in Zoom can hear me. Please do a thumbs up if that's true. Great. I know everybody in the sanctuary can hear me. You can do a thumbs up too, though. That's always good. Lots of thumbs up. Second thumbs up because today we have the wonderful joy and privilege of having Po Jen Lee, our beloved Po Jen Lee, back with us. He's going to be preaching this morning, and he's got quite um, he's the church as much as you can fill our church right now with, with uh, warm, loving bodies, which is people also in Zoom who are tuned in to listen to his words this morning. So really, the only announcement we have is that for anyone who is here in person, you are welcome to join us in the fellowship hall following the service. There's food and coffee. Everything's set up to be socially distanced as much as possible. So we're going to ask you to please honor, you know, our, our precautions. Leave your mask on unless you're taking a nibble. Don't take it all the way off and leave it off. We really are trying to keep each other safe. So. Um, just observe those precautions. Also, for everybody that's in Zoom, we'll bring the laptop in and we will make about five or 10 minutes for Po Jen to at least interact with the people that are on Zoom who haven't had a chance to say hello to him yet this morning. Uh, so he gets to socialize two different ways, hybrid socialization, just like hybrid worship. Those are the only announcements that I have for the life of the church. Is there anything else that I need to say that you would need to remind me about? Okay. Then we usually begin with centering music and Alan will provide that for us live. I am also gonna just say to everybody, we've had some Wi-Fi issues this morning. We've got, a, we have backup plans in case, but um, just pray hard for a good signal all the way through. Thank you so much, Alan. And we now turn to the call to worship that you can find. If you're here in the church, you'll find it in your bulletin. If you are joining us through Zoom, you will see it up on your screen. I'm going to ask that those that are in Zoom unmute for the call to worship so that we can hear your voices along with those in the sanctuary. And in the sanctuary, please go ahead. The only thing that we ask you not to do during the course of this morning is to sing out loud. I know that's hard. You can hum when we get to singing, uh, but you can't sing out loud just for safety reasons. Folks in Zoom can sing out loud, but they mute themselves. But we'd like to hear the voices of everyone a couple of times. So we'll do this now and we'll do this for the Lord's Prayer as well. You, O oh God, are our shepherd. You provide for everything we need. Let us rest in green meadows and lead us beside quiet streams. You renew our strength and guide, and guide us in ways in honor to your name. Even when we walk through difficult valleys, we will not fear. 
for you never are far away. Protecting, protecting and guarding and guiding every step we take. Prepare a feast for us in the presence of our enemies. You welcome us as friends and lavish blessings on us. We know that your, know that your goodness, goodness and your unfailing love will continue to pursue us all the days of our lives, and that after, that after our lives are over, we will spend eternity in your presence. So, so today we're going to add some new technology to our experience with prayers. We are borrowing a microphone from Bel uh, DeCapo. They're let it, loaning it to us for the day to check out a wireless microphone so that if you have a prayer concern and you're here in the sanctuary, we're going to hand you the microphone. And the reason we do that is so that the people in Zoom can hear you. They're, they can only hear what is said into a microphone. And this is an inclusive experience. So we want everyone to be able to hear each other's prayers if they're lifted up out loud. We begin with any prayers that we bring together that are of concern or worry or fear. And we start in the sanctuary and then we move to Zoom. So please, if there's anybody that has a prayer that you wish to say out loud, a prayer of concern here in the sanctuary, raise your hand and Bob Carper will bring the microphone to you. Everybody's going to be really shy this morning. Disproving the chance that we're even going to get to test the technology. You're going to have to be really happy later then. Well, in Zoom, do we have any prayers of concern? If so, please unmute yourselves and go ahead and say them out loud. You guys are all just so happy. Everybody's happy. Ho Jen. Ho Jen brings happiness with them. Um, brings the I sunlight. Just, the sunlight's right there. And brings the happiness. Well, then I'm going to return. There is, there is one, Gail. There is one. Yeah. OK, yeah. Jennifer, thank you. Um, I just want to uh, say continue prayers for Megan and dealing with her dad and his liver disease. Um, she came back, flew back from Florida last night, and that was experience in itself um but uh just not sure how much it's gonna last but it's just been hard for her to deal with this so just continue prayers so for megan i am going to name some prayers that have been brought forward to our attention for the eovinos in bartlett for nancy a member of our community and her journey through cancer, for Scamp and her ongoing journey through the diagnostics for her medical conditions. We will do the body prayer. Um, we'll do it both as concern and celebration. And again, we're gonna do that based on 1 Corinthians. So know that if you are praying for somebody who has any type of a diagnosis, anything from stroke and Alzheimer's to cancer or diabetes or some complication with a specific part of the body that as we pray that prayer, we are praying for each and all of you. Uh, we pray for parts of the world that are struggling right now. We pray uh, for India. We pray for parts of our own nation who are reeling still from uh, acts of violence and, and yet also finding hope in decisions that lead to justice. Any final prayers of concern this morning? Go ahead, Bob. There's one right there. We have one here in the sanctuary. I'd like um, to ask you to be there to our kidney care. Um, that is, you know, it's important to also find out why it happened and if they have to be there. Gail, we cannot hear that. I know, I know you can't. We're working on it. Huh? It's not, but that's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna share it. Thank you. Um, 
De Bill Botsford was in intensive care this week and he has come home again safely, but ongoing prayers for Bill and his resilience. Uh, Gail, I have one for uh, John Pepper. Uh, and I don't know whether or not it's open for, it's not. Just Sorry. hold hold the peppers in your prayers, please. I have a uh, concern and, and, and good hopes for a good friend named Bill, who I've mentioned before. He's been battling with pancreatic cancer for the last three years, and this Tuesday he has a big scan coming up, and hopefully with uh, all good wishes and prayers, he'll be cancer-free. All right, so that's a prayer both of um, concern but also of hope. It's, it's, it's the next step. Let us turn to prayers of joy, celebration, gratitude. And we begin by naming, again, our partner church, the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare in the nation of Zimbabwe, as well as the villages in Honduras with whom we have forged connections, and the other parts of the world where our children live and our loved ones live, Nepal, Italy, so many different places that our our family, our, uh, our hearts are there as well. And Taiwan, right? Taiwan, Ho Jen's family, right? Uh, we, we are bound together by our love for each other. Other prayers of joy or gratitude first here in the sanctuary. Okay, Lori's got one. I just want to say, Joy, that I have, we have Sasha back home with us. Ah. She is healthy, wealthy, and wise. <laughs> so a prayer of gratitude for where Sasha finds herself on her journey. Yeah. Watch your step. And we're, Arden's going to give us a prayer. Right <laughs> Arden's enjoying the number of people that are here in the sanctuary and wishes that we could gather this often with so many people. Um, it's coming. It's, it's coming. We're, we're checking it out today. Other prayers here in the church. Prayers of gratitude or joy in Zoom. I have one. Um, Joy and uh, congratulations to Talia Hutchings. Gloria and Tom's daughter was married in Florida yesterday. Um, looks like on a beach and it was beautiful and sunny and warm. And um, I can't believe that Talia's all grown up and married. <laughs> <laughs> all grown up and married, Talia. So for celebrations and the chance for families to once more be able to gather uh, to honor these milestones that come in our lives, our anniversaries, our weddings, our baptisms, our birthdays, whatever the meaningful gathering may be, the chance to do this in person again is, we know how important it is now because we've done without it. We know what it means. We cherish it more than ever. Other prayers of joy or concern or celebration? All right. You guys are really quiet today. Nobody's got a spring sighting. Okay, I know that Lori, Mc, I, Lori Kinsey, go ahead. Come on, Lori. Give us, give us the update. She's going to liven us up here. Yeah. For the past two mornings, I've been watching a mother bear at a cub in my front yard. And, you know, for a half hour, 45 minutes, just grazing <laughs> and a little top up the tree. So it's a, uh, it's a yearly spring ritual, and it's uh, really a joy to watch them. That black bear and that cub reminding us that life returns. Oh, we have another <laughs> prayer. <laughs> Once people get warmed up, then we start getting happy. 
We need to we need to hire a comedian to get you guys warmed up before we start the service. Just want to um, express gratitude and joy at, for the presence of Hojen today mm -hmm. and all that he's meant to many of us personally, our families, and this whole community. Yeah. Really, a special moment. So thank you. Just so there's a camera on you so they can see you, Pojen. <laughs> While we're talking, they get to see you too. You're in there. <laughs> we put a camera on Pojen. We're, we're playing around with cameras and, uh, and everything this morning. It's a little interesting. So please gather yourself for prayer. And we begin this morning with the body prayer. We'd been doing a version of praying for our body that had become really an anatomy lesson. And, and that's important in its own right because in our community, almost every organ of the body is represented as being a place of concern for someone. But this morning we will pray from our scripture, which also speaks to us about the importance of the body. So please join me in prayer. Creator Christ and comforter, as we're told in Genesis, all of humankind, each of us, was made in your image and likeness. Today, we lift up your children in prayer, in concern and celebration. This morning, we place into your keeping the parts of our bodies, which are your bodies, that need healing and hope, comfort and dignity, love and renewal. You gave birth to the whole world. So we also ask for your attention and compassionate presence for the vulnerable places in your creation. And as we remember in 1 Corinthians 12, we acknowledge with gratitude that you have shared with us, your children, a variety of gifts poured out by your spirit. This same spirit binds us together so that when one of us cries out, you cry out. And when one of us celebrates, you sing along. You remind us as we gather as your people to understand our lives together by looking at our own human bodies. Each body has many parts, limbs, organs, cells, yet all members living in one body. It's the same when we, so many and so different, come together as distinctive parts of the body of Christ the resurrected body of Christ made stronger by shared diversity and unified by belonging to God's self. All of the parts are arranged to function together, whether you are the strongest or the most vulnerable part of this body. You have been created and you are necessary and you are called beloved. Today, let us learn anew what it means to live as members of your human and holy body, every part dependent on every other part, the parts we mention and the parts we don't, the parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every part is involved both in the hurting and in the healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into the exuberance. You and me, we are Christ's body. That's who we are. That's who each of you is. This faith community is one part of a larger body, many distinct members bound together and transformed by God's love. We need each other. We depend on each other. When we pray over our individual minds, hearts, and bodies, we are also praying for each other's bodies, hearts, and minds, and for the hurting and healing, living and dying and resurrected body of Christ, which is all of us, you and me belonging each to the other, loving each other in this world and in the next. We move from this prayer to the prayer that you first taught us. And again, please unmute if you're in Zoom so that we may all say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And if Tony DeLuca would please come forward to read this morning's scripture selected by Po Jen. Good morning. A uh, couple of things I would like to say. First of all, I want to acknowledge all of the time, the effort, and the work that Gail, oh, I didn't even see the mic, <laughs> that Gail has put into this past week or two in preparing for Pogen's visit. I'll cite one specific example. Those of us who go to C3, that's code, uh, have a tradition at the end of our meeting where Yale assembles and presents to us various works of art that underscore the theme that we've been discussing. Well, Friday's was exceptional, truly exceptional. And it could not have been done without a lot of time and effort. And I also want to acknowledge that Gail has tried to anticipate every detail <laughs> about the technological complexities of doing something like this. And for someone like me who is technophobic, I, I, I truly, truly appreciate that. Pojen. Uh, what? Well, just listen, and then you'll know what. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, given that the, I truly believe uh, that words matter and uh, content counts, I decided this morning not to refer to you as your eminence because I did not want to be accused of committing blasphemy yes. in the cathedral. So welcome back. I also have something I want to say. Simply put, God is good and you look great. Today's reading is from John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. Alan? Okay. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. 
I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. I have received. First of all, I'd like to say peace to all of you. And the secondly, I would like to thank Pastor Gale, who allows me to have this chance to come back for worshiping and uh, fellowshipping together once more. After all these years that I have been away, and it is a homecoming to me. I appreciate so much for Gail's invitation and her openness to receive everybody. And that is a blessing to our church here in Jackson. Yes, COVID-19 pandemic has been dragging too long. However, even though we are still in the state of lockdown, so many people are age, aging, angry, lonely, and sometimes are so fearful. However, today, we are still together in person, in Zooming, to worship in a fellowship, and we are still breathing. And as I always want to share with you and want to shout, God is great. Life is good. Remember, no matter ups and the downs in our life journey, God is great in our life. As you remember, whenever day, I also like to share with you my three experiences while I have been away in Washington, D.C. and encountering so many issues, giving me so much opportunity to meditate to think what is this life all about. First of all, no matter what kind of uh, tragedies or difficulties in our life, even death, we are so grateful, grateful that we still a good shepherd's voice to hear. Sometimes when we are in a dire need of help, we cannot really even, even to turn to the people closest to us. And therefore, the voice of the good shepherd is important. And today I want to share with you the voice of Good Shepherd. The number one is when the Good Shepherd call you and call me to follow him because he would uh, make you lie down in the green pastures. 
He would need you beside the still waters. Green pasture, still waters. I am living in a 564 square feet condo right on the top of eight building, eight floor. It's so tiny, I really got squeezed. However, do you know when you lie down on it, the green pasture and being led to the still waters, this tiny, very limited space of my poor condo becomes a new learning life learning center and it makes me become a student again <laughs> every single day i have so much to learn in my 82 years on this planet earth i was so ignorant and sometimes even stupid <laughs> because i didn't know there are so much out there for me to learn. I thought I was very wise until I listened to the TED talk. I listened to the podcast. I listened, listened to the beautiful uh, presentation of the theater, of the music. And then I found that I had missed so much so much opportunities to learn, to grow. So 82, still going strong to grow. Because that tiny little place has become the green pasture. And I was led to the still water. Don't complain. You are in the most beautiful place in Jackson. But turn around, the mountain, the green mountains, beautiful flowers, streams, rivers. You are so blessed. But listen. This type of beauty might not give you the good life because you have so much other worries. You're longing for many, much more things to come to you. But remember, the voice of the Good Shepherd is to promise you to lie down on the green pastures and also that too besides the still water number one number two i have been very disturbed by my sort of retired pastoral uh, 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 work in both taiwan and uh, in dc because lately especially during this uh, pandemic crisis. There are so many very, very well-to-do senior citizens, either in their 60s, 70s, and the 80s, even 90s. And they are so, so well off that they did not really lack of anything in their lives. They have so much wealth with them. However, do you know what happened to them? They come to me. They are depressed. They are fearful. They feel so sorry that they have amassed so much wealth on earth that today they 
come to a point that even they want to enjoy what they have. Still on it. Two, Sorry, two, I'm having trouble with the connection. Yeah. Please try again in a moment. However, they have already lost their chance to do so. Some of them are already in the wheelchairs and their partner, their wives or husband are having a dementia, Alzheimer's, and with so, so much money that they do not feel happy at all. Instead, they feel so depressed. So down and out, they ask me, now, Paul Jen, you know, look at that. I'm so sorry I have made out so well in my life. But now, look at me, how am I going to deal with my life right here and right now? And then the voice of Good Shepherd came to me through the parable of the three employers, employees, remember? This big boss wanted to go away and so he called his three employees and one of them, he gave a hundred thousand US dollars, said go ahead to do anything that, for me. And the other one was giving two hundred thousand dollars and the third one was given five hundred thousand. Do you remember that parable? You didn't go to the Sunday school, so you don't, didn't learn that. The first one took the $100,000 and he was so afraid of his boss because his boss is very nasty. And sometimes he wanted to, you know, I mean, like, you know, like pick, pick, pick the bones, uh, you know, out of whatever. And so, so he was so afraid that he, put his $100,000 in the ground. And then the second one who got the $200,000, what did he do? He went out and he hustled and, uh, you know, and then he made another $200,000. And that $500,000 one, he even worked harder. And so he got double of what his $500,000 that his boss entrusts in him. And that is the voice of the good shepherd. It's actually the Bible is not only talking about the monetary issues. It's not only talking about the, the, the earthly things like, uh, you know, big car, big house. It's not talking about that. Not, not only talking about that. It's talents that both gave to them is our potential. It's our energy, it's our gift of loving people, loving environment, loving the world, your deep concerns with justice, with peace, with equality. Why? is so chaotic in our society because most of people with such a great potential to be universally compassionate and loving, he and they just buried their hundred thousand dollars in the ground and become dead things. However, our good shepherd is wishing each and every one of us do not lay up their treasures on earth. What does that mean? Is God has given you so much gift, so much strength and energy and wisdom and knowledge to multiply the efforts and effectiveness 
to benefit the people near you, around you, or the people even living in the end of the earth. And that is the true meaning of being a human being. If you're only concerned with yourself, life is so limited. Life is so, so unremarkable. Only when you receive the $200,000 or $500,000, don't worry about it. You sit in a wheelchair, so what? You still can really educate, teach your children, grandchildren. Don't ever bury that $100,000 in the ground. And this is applied to every single one of us. Don't tell me that you are too old. You are too sick. You are too ill and you are too, you just cannot do it anymore. No. I was run and hit over by the car three years ago, as you know. They smashed my leg. And today, I still try to walk the best way I could do and stand here with you to worship, to share, listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd. Third, number three, living to serve your name and it is to love this world, regardless of the skins of their colors. I was so happy to be living in a section of the Black people's community, and they are so, so kind, and they are so beautiful. And when you meet them, when I was dragging my, my, my luggage, they will come and say, Mr. May I help you? Hmm? count your blessing every day. You, all of you, you, have been given so much. What kind of difficulties? What kind of a bad thing that happened to you? Just count your blessings every day, but don't forget the most important thing is when you pray, when you ask for something, you must say, by thy will. We pray too much because we ask too much from whatever God did. And yet, when Jesus, the last day of his life, he was praying in the garden all of what did he say? God, if you can help me, that's all right. If you cannot help me to remove this cup of death, torture, blood, thy will be done. I always share with you, great expectation will bring greatest disappointment. So only hold on what you are given and be grateful. Counting these blessings. Do you know when I was here, the tiny Baba, the dolls, kids, Linda's kids, and, uh, and uh, all of you, I mean, the, the, those kids, my God, my grandson, Nabil, would be graduated two to three days from now from the college. Can you imagine that? I still be, think that uh, we are still holding him and, uh, and uh, changing his diapers. And today, he is going, he is going to be 
22 years old, a uh, college graduate. Count your blessing. Of course, we went through a lot with him too, but the thing is, in the end, beautiful thing happened to us. Even not beautiful thing happened to us. You have to thank God. Even I got run over by the car, I still thank God because that even give me another lesson how to go through the life journey. But thy will be done. Not my way, your way. Got the three points? Good. Amen. Yeah, thank you. Well, I see a lot of smiles in Zoom and I heard chuckles in the sanctuary. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pojen. Uh, we wish to offer you an encore of the choir song that was prepared for Easter. If you're in Zoom, you'll get to see the natural scenery that we show with it, but the words and the music are beautiful in their own right. So please, if you're here in the sanctuary, receive the gift that our choir prepared for us to celebrate resurrection and which we share today again because Po Jen is here and Po Jen has brought the body of Christ together here in this place and across Zoom to celebrate reunion and resurrection. There's a place I've come to know, though my heart and flesh may fail. There's an anchor for my soul, I can say it is well. Jesus has
People in Zimmer are plotting. <laughs> um, I think everybody knows how much the gift of music has meant to this church. We were fortunate to welcome Alan into music ministry with us, and then Billy Carlton showed up just as COVID began, and together they have supported a choir that sings across multiple states. It has grown and tripled in size. Those voices um, sing separately and are joined together to become the song that you heard. For Easter, they invited a violin. Um, additional music was shared. It's a gift of much time and much love that they offer to all of us. And it's one of the ways that God speaks through many voices, just as God spoke through Pojen this morning. And if we think of the message that Po Jen gave saying that God has given us a gift of potential. When we turn to the offering this morning, we ask that you will indeed think about the potential of this community gathered together, whether it is across Zoom or whether it is here in person, how you have all come together because you are moved by the spirit of God, because Po Jen had something to say to you this morning, and because this church has been alive all the way through COVID, it never shut its doors, and it never turned its back on this community. It has been alive, and it has been working in different parts of the world this whole time, and all of our sister churches and our partner churches do the same thing. Our gatherings are hope. And we are voices of God speaking out to each other, reminding us of our potential. So we ask that this morning you will choose again to honor your commitment to this church and to those that we serve and uphold through our ministries. Whether you give by jxncc.org or you put something in an envelope or you put it in a brass plate when you leave this morning or in the basket when you're on your way out, we thank you for the ways that you support us and we give thanks for each of you because your voices too are the voice of God in the lives of others. We have a song to share together and then the benediction. So we're going to put up the words of the hymn. And again, if you're in Zoom, you can sing to your heart's content as loudly as you want. And Bob, did you make a decision about live or not? All right, Bob's going to try singing live for us from the microphone with Alan. So we have a song leader. You guys can all hum along. We, uh, we adapted the words for Be Thou My Vision to Be Thou My Shepherd in honor of Po Jen. Start again. Bye. 
And now you get to, if you're in sanctuary, you can hum along with the benediction. And if you're in Zoom, you can stay muted and sing along. And um, we will put those words up on the screen for you now as well. We hope, we hope. There we go. But I don't hear anything. Audio's gone. <laughs> I wish we could sing it live. We're going to hum it live. Okay, here we go. We're going to hum it live. Um, Pojen has brought a huge amount of um, energy and creativity and adaptability to this morning's experience. We, we've jumped through a lot of hoops to make this work at all. We've tried some new things and things still went sideways and were very interesting, but this is how churches adapt, right? You know, we've spent a whole year figuring out how to be church through everything. And we did it again this morning, and I believe everybody still has a smile on their face. So if you had a good everybody's got their thumbs up. I'm going to spin the, um, the laptop so they can all see you. Put your thumbs up for everybody out there. All right. Well. <laughs> And we are going to uh, create a few moments after the postlude for Pojen to go ahead and visit with people on Zoom, but not too long. And then everyone, you're welcome to come back into the fellowship hall and enjoy your time with Pojen. But right now we're going to close out with Alan's music. <laughs> 